The Life of Wendy Corduroy of Gravity Falls Wendy Blurble Corduroy was born in 1996 or 1997. She's a tall, laid-back teenager with a part-time job at the Mystery Shack. She's fun-loving and rebellious, and frequently avoids responsibility for activities she finds more enjoyable, such as hanging out with her rambunctious friends or going on adventures with Dipper and Mabel Pines. She represents the ice pack on the Bill Cipher Zodiac due to being cool in the face of danger. Welcome to the Amagi, and today we're going over the life of Wendy Corduroy. Before we begin, we publish new content every week, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Wendy made her first appearance on the series in Tourist Trapped. She makes her debut when Stan asks her to put up some signs advertising the mystery shack in the spooky part of the woods. She is seen reading a magazine at the counter and claims that she can't reach it, pretending to reach for them. Later in the episode, she gives Dipper the keys to the mystery cart and tells him to try not to hit any pedestrians. She is later seen working at the ticket stand with Dipper and Headhunters, saying that Stan probably bribed people to come see the grand unveiling of Wax Stan. She and Dipper share a laugh after revealing to each other that they indeed were both bribed to attend. In The Hand That Rocks the Mabel, Mabel asks Wendy if she has ever dumped a boy. Wendy begins to list all the boys she's broken up with, and is so busy doing so that she doesn't notice Mabel leaving. Afterwards, her current boyfriend calls her and she ignores the call. In The Inconveniencing, she is seen hanging out with Dipper and Mabel at the shack. She leads them to her secret rooftop hiding place, but she soon leaves when her friends show up. Later, she allows Dipper and Mabel to come along with her and her friends to the abandoned dusk to dawn. She parties with the rest of her friends once they get inside the old convenience store. When the ghosts of Ma and Pa attack, she, Dipper, and Robbie end up as the only ones not targeted. She watches Dipper as he does the Lammy Lammy dance to please Ma and Pa. After the ghosts leave and her friends are returned, she keeps Dipper's secret about the dance, instead telling her friends that he attacked the ghosts with a baseball bat. She then decides that they should stay at the Mystery Shack the next time they hang out together. In Dipper vs. Manliness, Wendy is seen at Greasy's Diner eating pancakes with her father. She later assists Mabel with her attempts to make Stan attractive enough for Lazy Susan. In Double Dipper, Dipper makes a complicated step-by-step -step list to help himself impress Wendy at the ticket stand when Stan sets up a party at the Mystery Shack. Later, during the party, he starts a conversation with Wendy unexpectedly in the line for the bathroom. Wendy shows Dipper an embarrassing picture of herself and her brothers from when they were younger, prompting Dipper to reveal his Big Dipper-shaped birthmark to her. Then they toast their sodas to both being freaks. Later, Wendy and Robbie hang out at the party. In The Time Traveler's Pig, Wendy wants to win a stuffed creature of indeterminate species, a purple cross between a panda and a duck, at the mystery fair. Dipper tries his best to knock all the pins down, but accidentally hits Wendy in the eye with the ball. Dipper runs off to get ice for her, but when he comes back, Robbie has arrived with his shaved ice and is talking to Wendy. When Robbie asks Wendy out and she says yes, Dipper is horrified. He later steals a time machine from Blendon Blandon, a time traveler, to go back to the time when he tried to knock the pins down so he can redo the throw. However, every time he goes back in time, the same thing happens. Wendy gets hit in the eye and Robbie comes to help her. Later, Dipper gets it right and doesn't hit her with Mabel's help, but he purposely misses after going back in time again to let Mabel win her pig Waddles back again since the plan backfired. By the end of the episode, Wendy and Robbie are still dating. In Fight Fighters, Wendy is at the arcade with Dipper, playing a game called Fight Fighters. Robbie arrives and takes Dipper's place. Wendy tells Robbie that she will be going camping with her family, but Robbie isn't listening and is too busy playing the game. When Wendy returns from her camping trip, she runs into Robbie in a bruised Dipper. She originally thinks they have been fighting, but is convinced otherwise. Happy that her two boys are getting along, she kisses Robbie on the cheek and playfully tugs on the brim of Dipper's cap. Back at the Mystery Shack, she tells him both an anecdote, stopping midway to pick up her dropped hairbrush, and thus being oblivious to the threatening gestures Dipper and Robbie make at each other. In Summer Ween, Wendy comes to the Mystery Shack with Robbie to get her coat. She tells Dipper that Tambry is having a party at 9 o'clock, which is where they are going. Robbie correctly suspects Dipper is about to go trick-or-treating, but Wendy tells Robbie he probably isn't, as it's for little kids. Dipper, not wanting to embarrass himself in front of Wendy, tells Wendy that he agrees. Wendy tells him he should go to Tambry's party with them. At the end of the episode, Wendy returns from the party and asks Dipper where he was. Dipper tells her that he was trick-or-treating with Mabel. Wendy tells him the party was lame anyways and that Robbie had to go home sick because he ate a lollipop stick first. At the end of the episode, Wendy, the twins, Seuss, Stan, Cindy Chu, and Grenda laugh evilly while watching a horror movie at the Mystery Shack. 
In Boss Mabel, Wendy and the other employees become fed up with the way Stan runs a mystery shack. When Mabel becomes the boss of the shack, she allows all the employees to do whatever they want. Wendy and her friends play around in the gift shop and accidentally hurt a customer. After being scolded by Mabel, Wendy accuses her of acting like Stan, prompting Mabel to give Wendy the rest of the day off with full pay. When the shack is destroyed by the Grim Loblin, Mabel asks Seuss and Wendy to help her fix it up. When they both give excuses to not do any work, Mabel snaps and starts barking orders at them. After the twins, Seuss and Wendy finish repairing the shack, Stan comes back and has to sing an apology song for losing a bet he made earlier with Mabel. Wendy brings a camera to record Stan reluctantly dancing. In Bottomless Pit, Wendy only appears in Dipper's story, VoiceOver, where she plays Spin the Pig with Mabel and Seuss. She also teases Dipper for his squeaky puberty voice, as well as dancing along to a techno remix of Dipper's voice. In The Deep End, Wendy works as a lifeguard in the Gravity Falls pool. She apparently decided to work there when she found out lifeguards get to have free snack privileges. Dipper volunteers to become an assistant lifeguard to spend more time with Wendy, although she told him he had to check in with her boss, Mr. Poolcheck. Wendy later locks up Stan in the pool jail and breaks some rules with Dipper, such as running around the pool and persuading Seuss to steal the pool's inflatable ducks. By the end of the episode, she gets fired by Poolcheck for taking too many snacks, so she and Dipper decide to break more rules somewhere else. Wendy briefly appears in Carpet Diem when she enters the mystery shack, asking Seuss if he has seen one of her belongings. She then sees Waddles in Seuss' body chewing on a t-shirt. After seeing this, she says she'll come back later and walks out of the shack in a disturbed manner. In Boys Crazy, she and Dipper are first seen making fun of a surveillance footage of Grunkle Stan speaking to a customer. When Mabel seems to be excited about meeting several times at the Gravity Falls Civic Center and Buffet, Wendy agrees with Dipper that boy bands are fake. When Robbie shows up at the Mystery Shack, he asks Wendy if they can go to Lookout Point together. But Wendy angrily rejects his request, since he didn't apologize for standing her up for a date the night before. She begins to feel that they should just break up which prompts Robbie to play a romantic song for her that he claimed he made just for her. She decides to give him another chance, causing Dipper to think that he brainwashed Wendy by using hidden messages in his song. Later, Dipper confronts Robbie for brainwashing Wendy on their date. He figured out why the messages are in the song. Robbie says that he didn't really write the song and that he ripped it off from another band. Wendy angrily calls Robbie a liar since he told her earlier that he wrote the song for her. She finally decides to break up with him, much to Dipper's happiness. However, once Dipper suggests a bowling night, Wendy snaps at him, saying that boys only think about themselves. She tells Dipper to leave her alone and heads off crying, which leaves Dipper feeling guilty for what he has done. In Lamb Before Swine, she was briefly mentioned by Mabel in a conversation with Stan. Wendy makes a brief appearance in Dreamscaperers, making fun of Gideon's new commercial with the rest of the Mystery Shack crew. She also states that Gideon has been stealing her moisturizer. In Gideon Rises, Wendy states that her father will force her to move upstate to work at her cousin's logging camp since the mystery shack was taken by Gideon. When Robbie shows up, begging her to take him back, she quickly leaves, telling Dipper and Seuss, I was never here. Later, she is seen wordlessly saying goodbye to Dipper and Mabel as they leave Gravity Falls. At the end of the episode, she helps the Pines family and Seuss rebuild the mystery shack. Season 2 Fortunately, with Stan reclaiming the shack, Wendy doesn't have to move and thus immediately resumes work at the shack. In Scaryoke, while helping set up decorations for the Mystery Shack as back party, Wendy mentions to Dipper that the most likely place that Stan would have hidden the card given to Dipper by Agent Powers is his room. The two make a plan to sneak in and get it. Later during the party, the two put their plan into action. Wendy stands guard while Dipper enters the room. Unfortunately, due to being distracted by a picture of her friends, Wendy is caught and is unable to prevent Dipper from being caught as well. Later, at the onset of the zombie invasion, believing that the shaking is from an earthquake, Wendy immediately evacuates the party guests in time, sparing them from the zombie attack. The night after, during Into the Bunker, Dipper is filled her in on what happened, and the two are, ironically enough, watching a zombie movie together. Wendy teams with Mabel, Seuss, and Dipper to break into the bunker mentioned in Journal 3. Putting her lumberjack skills to use, she climbs a tree and uses her axe to flip the switch, thus opening the stairway in. She locates the entrance into the security room and narrowly escapes alive from the closing-in walls. Mabel, in an effort to help Dipper conquer his fear of asking out Wendy, locks the two of them in what she believes to be a closet. Really, it's a decontamination room leading to another part of the bunker. There, the two quickly come under assault by a creature but are saved by a man who claims to be the author. 
However, it's quickly revealed to be a ruse and the man is actually a shapeshifter. Reuniting with Seuss and Mabel, the four of them make a plan to trap the beast in a cryogenic tube. During a struggle between Wendy and the shapeshifter, it takes her form and believing her to be dead, Dipper unknowingly confesses his love for Wendy to an unconscious shapeshifter. The real Wendy overhears this and soon battles the shapeshifter again. After showing that she is the real one, the shapeshifter is stabbed by Dipper and locked in a cryogenic tube by the efforts of the gang. Outside the bunker, Wendy admits all along that she could tell that Dipper had a crush on her, having heard him say as much under his breath. But while she's flattered, she feels that she's too old for him, but wishes for them to remain friends. That said, Wendy does admit that her summer, and by extension her life, is now much better with Dipper in it than it was without. In Sock Opera, she helps Mabel with her sock puppet show. She tells Dipper to roll with Mabel's craziness, adding that it's what makes life worth living. She later offers a ride to Dipper's Bill Cipher-possessed body. She attends the show along with everybody else. In Seuss and the Real Girl, she suggests that Stan should get rid of Goldie, but Stan refuses. She later tells Seuss that he has a good chance of getting a date, though she avoids answering when Stan asks if she'd date him. Despite not caring, she hears Stan tell her how the local pizzeria won't sell him their animatronic badger. When Stan decides to steal the badger, she tries to dissuade him, but he ignores her. In the beginning of Society of the Blind Eye, she is seen in the Mystery Shack being irritated by the song Straight Blanchin, which Seuss is playing. Later, she joins the twins and Seuss on another case to find who the author is. Dipper convinces the gang that Old Man McGucket is the author because of the clue he found, and they confront him. However, McGucket doesn't recall anything about the book until Dipper flips to a page with a strange symbol that freaks him out. McGucket then remembers that the symbol belongs to a group who did something to his mind, although he's not sure who. McGucket gives them a small clue leading them to the Gravity Falls Museum of History with McGucket now tagging along. Soon after their arrival, they chase a suspicious person, stopping into a room with the suspect nowhere in sight. Soon after finding a secret passage, they witness the doings of the Blind Eye Society as they wipe Lazy Susan's memory of seeing the supernatural form behind the curtains. When the coast is clear, they investigate. Meanwhile, Wendy talks to Mabel, who is going through boy trouble, giving her advice to just forget about them. The gang is eventually caught by the members, and they were going to be wiped of their memories. In this moment, Wendy confesses that she's not actually laid back, but constantly stressed because of her family. Then McGucket comes to the rescue, freeing them and giving them weapons to fight against the enemies. They are finally able to stop the members and wipe their memories instead, and McGucket regained his memories, revealing himself not to be the author after all. Afterwards, the members, now without any memory of the Blind Eye Society, go on their merry way. In Blendon's game, Wendy tells the twins that Seuss hates his birthday. Later on in the episode, Dipper and Mabel are sent ten years into the past and run into five-year-old Wendy with Tambry, both riding tricycles. Younger Wendy then whispers to Tambry, who tells Dipper that Wendy thinks he's cute, to which Wendy responds by shoving Tambry off her trike. In The Love God, Dipper, Mabel, Wendy, Lee, Nate, Tambry, and Thompson are cloud-watching at the Gravity Falls Cemetery. Mabel then spots a hot air balloon, and Wendy states that the annual Woodstick Festival is in town, featuring up-and-coming independent musicians. Dipper then confesses that he has never attended an actual concert, and Wendy states that it is because he never had an awesome crew to roll with before. When an ominous moaning is heard, Wendy leads the group to an open grave. The moaning is revealed to be coming from Robbie, who is still mourning his and Wendy's breakup. When Wendy asks him about this, he tries to hide what he is doing, though no one buys it. Back at the Mystery Shack, Wendy apologizes to Dipper and Mabel for the awkward encounter. When Mabel suggests setting Robbie up with a new girlfriend, Wendy states her belief that Robbie is a lost cause. Later, when Mabel announces that Robbie and Tambry have begun a relationship to the other teens at Thompson's house, Wendy is appalled by Tambry dating her ex without her knowledge. She storms off and leaves the house. Wendy and her friends eventually reconcile after the festival when they see Thompson running from security guards for bringing outside food. She is seen briefly in Not What He Seems, walking to work at the Mystery Shack. Upon seeing the government agents, she immediately walks away. She is seen at the end of A Tale of Two Stands, being informed of the episode's events by a blabbering Seuss. In The Stanchurian Candidate, Wendy helps with Stan's campaign for becoming the new mayor. In The Last Mabel Corn, Wendy joins Mabel and her friends in their search for a unicorn, despite showing skepticism over their existence. After Celeste Bell Bethabel declares that Mabel is not good-hearted enough to be given a lock of her hair, Wendy helps her perform good deeds around town. When Mabel is still rejected for not being good-hearted enough, Wendy leads Candy and Grenda in attacking Celeste Bell Bethabel and taking the hair by force. Mabel stops them, but then learns that Celeste Bell Bethabel had been lying to her all along. 
When Mabel punches Celestabelle Bethabel, Wendy cheers and joins in on the fight against Celestabelle Bethabel and the others. Later, they return to the mystery shack with the hair and a chest of treasure the unicorns gave them to stop them from beating them up. In the end credits, a picture of her from Into the Bunker is shown when Bill Cipher mentions picking his next pawn. In Dipper and Mabel vs. the Future, when Mabel goes to set up the party at the high school gym, she is seen registering for the school and tells Mabel that high school isn't as fun as TV has told Mabel. In Weird Mageddon Part 1, Wendy is seen to be strong and independent, taking shelter in Gravity Malls. She describes losing her friends but uses a secret hideout to avoid Bill's madness. She surprisingly buddies up with Toby Determined, but soon leaves the hideout to help Dipper rescue Mabel. On their quest, they encounter Gideon and his prison friends, who have recently escaped from jail and have been tasked with keeping Mabel trapped in a bubble by Bill. Though Gideon attempts to imprison them as well, Wendy frees herself and Dipper from one of the goon's arm locks and steals Mabel's key along with a police car to make it to Mabel's bubble. After Dipper convinces Gideon to fight for what his crush would like, Wendy, along with Dipper and Seuss, prepare to free Mabel. In Weirdmageddon 2 Escape from Reality, she, Dipper, and Seuss find themselves falling inside Mabel's bubble. When they reach the ground, Zyler and Kraz meet them and take them to Mabel's tower. The group raids the tower to save Mabel, but when Mabel wakes up, she reveals that she created the place called Mabel Land. Wendy then gets distracted by clones of four of her friends offering to invite her to a vandalism of a high school with the use of fireworks. After the trial of fantasy versus reality, she, Dipper, Mabel, and Seuss escape from the bubble. The group returns to the mystery shack after seeing the town deserted. The group proceeds to raid the shack after hearing noises only to be met by Stan and his resistance group who are taking refuge inside the mystery shack. In Weirdmageddon 3 Take Back the Falls, she is an active participant in the plan to fight back against Bill. During the battle against Bill's cohorts, she is part of the rooftop defense on the mobilized mystery shack with Rumble McSkirmish. She manages to jump onto one of the floating eyeballs and uses it to petrify Eight Ball's head as well as destroy another floating eyeball before returning to the mystery shack. She is then part of the rescue team to free Ford and the other petrified citizens from Bill's throne. She is briefly reunited with her family when they are unfrozen before she stays in the pyramid upon recognition as representing an open bag of ice on the Zodiac that could defeat Bill. However, Stan's inability to shake Ford's hand and keep the circle linked prevents them from generating the power needed to stop Bill before he catches them. Wendy is about to physically attack Bill, but he easily dispatches her and the majority of the others by turning them into individual banners hanging in the pyramid. The spell is only broken when the Pines defeat Bill. When Gravity Falls is restored, she and her friends welcome Dipper and Mabel to becoming teenagers. Wendy is among the few present to see Dipper and Mabel off home. She pulls Dipper aside and exchanges her lumberjack hat for his pine tree hat so that he would have something to remember her by. She also gives him a letter revealed to be signed by all of the twins' close friends who look forward to their return next summer with her own added message of stay cool. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.